What's going on YouTube? You're chilling with Trainer Zabza and today I have got an X and Y Wi-Fi battle for you guys against my buddy Tuan. Now looking at his team, possible threats. We've got Gengar, we've got Lucario, pretty much his entire team is threats. I mean you got Gudra, especially defensive, Ferrothorn, massive walls, can be physical or special defensive, Lucario, which can be Mega Evolution or even if it's not, it can be a physical or special setup sweeper, Greninja, which is crazy fast and again, can be a physical or a special set or even a mixed set. Gengar, possible Mega, and definitely fast and can hit very hard on the special size. And finally, Gliscor, which is a massive physical tank. So all in all, he's pretty much got his team cut in half to where it's pretty much defensive and offensive. But that's enough of that, let's get to the battle. Like I said, my opponent is my good buddy Tuan, which we actually had this battle through a stream I had before. I'm going to start off with my Talonflame as he starts off with his Jester, his Gliscor. Straight off the bat, I'm going to go for a U-turn, not wanting to take any kind of hit from this thing. Well, really not wanting to give this any kind of advantage. Because I'm going to go into my Trick Age Slash, and I call it my Trick Age Slash because it's not Swords Dance. It, one, it can resist the Rock-type hit, which I was kind of expecting, kind of not, but I knew he wouldn't go for Earthquake. And on the next turn, he's going to go for an Earthquake, which is going to do massive damage. But I'm going to be able to tank the hit, no problem. And I'm going to hit back with a Hidden Power Ice. That's right, Hidden Power Ice. I told you guys this before, but now you get to see it in action. Boom! One shot. Goodbye, Gliss score. So that was amazing. The first time I get to use it for its intended purpose. And he's going to switch into his Greninja. But no big deal. Just going to go for the stance change. King Shields. Uh, defensive form, whatever you want to say, and I'm going to get off the protect, well, the extra turn of leftover. That's pretty much a protect, as he goes for Surf, and I'm going to switch out, not wanting to take the Surf. Well, I can, but I can't, like, one-shot it in return, and go in my floor just. So, playing it safe, I know he's probably going to want to switch, and seeing that his Life Orb is good information, he goes for U-turn just to get off a little bit more damage, but it is, it is a resisted hit, so it's not going to do too much. It still does quite a bit, quite a bit, but uh, I'm not that worried. As he goes into his Pharaoh Thorn, and I'm just going to go for the Wish, intending to Wish Pass out. Now this next play is just standard Pharaoh Thorn. You, this is like back in fifth gen. This is what it did first turn. Besides rocks, he goes for Leech Seed, as I pass off the Wish, which is pretty much wasted, considering that you know Pharaoh Thorn came in. I mean, if it was any other Pokemon, it might have done well to tank a hit, but Pharaoh Thorn, not. Nah. And I'm going to go knock it out, one shot, bam, with a Flare Blitz. However, Iron Barbs and Rocky Helmet are going to hurt me. Not only that, but I'm going to get hit with Recoil and Life Orb Recoil, bringing me down to 19 HP. Which means, you know, Talonflame is either fodder or it's got one shot left in it. That's it. And he's going to go into his Lucario and go for the Mega. Now this, I was a little confused at first, but now I see he's actually packing the Bullet Punch. So, he was going to try and priority me to death. But no can do, I'm going to go into my Aegislash, and I'm guessing trying to set up on me, I don't know why you try and set up on an Aegislash. Just because you see Hidden Power doesn't mean I'm a special set. It could mean I'm mixed, because I'm going to go for the Sacred Sword and completely and utterly destroy him one shot, goodbye, GG. And you know, I just, I'm a little excited about this battle, but it's just, I finally got to use my Aegislash for its intended purpose, taking out Gliscor, its main counter. So I'm going to go for the King Shield again as he brings in Greninja, same song as Dance, same song and Dance as before. And I'm not that worried, because I'm in a pretty good position here in the battle, and predicting my switch, he's going to go for a U-turn. Which I'm pretty much expected before, since he I showed him that I was going to switch out. But also that I thought I was in, had enough HP to where I could take a hit and retaliate. So I'm going to go for the Sacred Sword, but it's not going to do anything to this Gengar, and I'm a little bit afraid of it, but I kind of just want to try and Shadow Sneak it, so he's going to pull back his Gengar, predicting this, and go into his Gudra. And, you know, Gooey, I don't care. It actually works better for me if Aegislash is slower because of uh, King Shield and, you know, being able to tank a hit first. But I'm going to go straight into my floor just as he goes for Thunderbolt, and I'm going to need to stay in and at some point I'm going to need to stay in and uh, wish pass to myself. So I go for the wish as he switches into Gengar 
and I'm afraid the thing this thing is gonna sludge bomb me. However, he goes for the substitute. Oh no, sub disable Gengar. Well, I don't know if it's sub disable, but I hate substitute Gengar. Well, I don't hate it. It's just a little difficult to deal with. So I'm, I I uh, pass off pass off the wish as he predicts me to switch into Aegislash, Slash. I'm guessing that's why he went for Shadow Ball. He could have just gone for Sludge Bomb, but I guess not. And I break his sub with the Moon Blast, and I'm a little, just a little bit worried here. Because I'm going to pull back, I'm going to go into my Talon Flame now, pretty much as fodder. And and even if he didn't, um, even if he went for another sub, I could have gone for the Priority Brave Bird. So either way, it was fodder. And uh, he goes, I go into my Kangaskhan. As he go and just go for the fake out while I still have my Scrappy, which is gonna hit him pretty hard. And here's a little bit of a trick I did. I'm gonna Mega Evolve, and I figure, you know, this thing is probably gonna set up another sub. So I'll go for Sucker Punch. He does set up another sub, and he's at a very low HP range. Now, normally a Sucker Punch from a Kangaskhan would probably one shot this from full HP, no problem. So I'm wondering if a hit from half damage would. Uh, be able to knock him out which apparently it does because I'm guessing if you can knock it out from full with one hit if you can knock it out from half from a half hit that was pretty much my reasoning there which it worked out just fine he's gonna go for the surf as I go for a power-up punch it will I knew I could take the hit because Kangaskhan is really bulky and I go for the power-up punch it does an okay amount not great I'm gonna get the two boost and he's gonna go for water shuriken holy crap there goes my strategy because I was planning to sucker punch this guy but thanks to water shuriken I'm not gonna be able to do that because if sucker punch goes second it fails but seeing that range of HP I can at least go down knowing that he's going to knock himself out I mean if it hit twice that would have been great I would have survived but he does hit three times he could have hit more but you know I, again no big deal so it's a double down, and on the blind switch, I send out my Aegislash. However, I didn't realize that this was his last Pokemon at the time. So I'm immediately, knowing that this isn't a good matchup for me, I'm going to switch out into my floor just, and he's going to go for the Fire Blast, which that could have hurt a lot. So I'm going to go for this, Is this next part is a little bit stally, so just bear with me. I'm going to go for the Wish just to be safe, and uh, go for Wish Passing to myself and Moonblast. He gets the Freeze, no big deal, I've got the Lumberry. And, uh, you know, really, this Lumberry is so useful. And the wish, is, the wish shenanigans are going to continue, but on this turn, I'm going to go for the Moonblast, knock him out, and end the battle. So, GG, Twan. Do you two mind... Seriously. The only way this could make the only more inconvenient this could be is if you were actually on my on my thing while I was doing that editing. Jeez, what the fuck, guys? This is what I have to deal with. In case you can't tell, it's a cat on each leg. And just to let you know, yes, one that is a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, table mat, whatever, and two. These two hate each other, so if one if, uh, well this one doesn't, but if he turns around and she notices, I'm going to get scratched all the hell. Just thought I'd share that with you guys. Be sure to check out the artists that make these videos possible, guys. Also, like and subscribe if you happen to like the video. Or if you'd like some help recording your X and Y battles, shoot me a PM on YouTube or Skype and I'll get back to you.